probably more, and an acre foot is the equivalent of a, a multiple number of football fields, and I think it was 15 of them, or maybe it was 30, I don't remember, but it was a lot. And when you're trying to, to fathom how much water this was, it's, it's almost impossible to picture how much it is, but they had two huge reservoirs of water that they mentioned, and they said in all the years with all the droughts that we've had, they've just this year started to dip into one of them and only a little bit. So it's not as bad as it was. And they said something to the effect that only 5%, and this I remember because it was burned in my brain because I was upset, of the usage of water in our, you know, in California is, and in this area, is um, urban. 40% is from the farmers. And an overwhelming, I think it was 45% or whatever it was, is from big business. But big business doesn't pay the huge fees that we do, and they get all the breaks. So we were asked to cut back. We're the ones that get all the huge increases, but we're only using 5%, and somehow that doesn't seem fair to me. Yeah, that's an issue that a lot of people across the state uh, raised, particularly when the governor issued uh, the new mandates for conservation. I do want to point out, DWP, every five years, uh, uh, Redux Urban Water Management Plan. We're in that fifth year right now. They're developing that. In 2016, there are going to be outreach meetings. Um, so please participate in that and get your voices heard on that. Marilyn, did you have a question? Um, I do have a question. Do we have access to water? Are we running out or do we have access to water? We have water right now, yes. And I go, I drive to Beverly Hills daily. None of them have brown lawn. There's some woman, I don't know, who used a thousand gallons a day or something. She's willing to pay the fine. Right. Do we have a lack of money or a lack of water? I, I mean, there are a lot of communities that have, you know, lawns that are probably larger than most of the lots that we own. And they're pretty green. So, I mean, that issue came up in the media not too long ago. Those users that have the resources to pay for using as much as they want. And there's been a big outcry across the city regarding that. And actually, the city council, city hall, as well as the department is working on addressing that. Um, there are actually, the department has been sending out notification letters to those large users excessive users because they do have the right to purchase as much as they can but um, because because the issue was raised it's it's you know and it's in the public forum now um, actions being taken so I can get you more specifics on exactly what but I do know that um, as of recently letters have been going out to I don't know how many there's there's numbers uh, connected yeah, by the way, that stat sheet I told you about, some of that information is on there as well. So, you know, again, yeah, that's the type of stuff you don't ne necessarily see in the, in the ordinary media. But if you start following that stat sheet, it comes out on a weekly basis. So um, you can keep abreast of things like that. Why are we building so many more houses? And apartments, the modern apartments. In your packet, I get asked that, and it's an issue that comes up all the time. In your packet. It should go on the mayor's desk. So he's the one who calls the shots. Um, there was a president for capita. I think around it's the board. Deputy, it's the mayor. Done to our board. Um, yeah, the, the mayor appoints yeah, the, 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 the commissioners. But at any rate, the, the um, presentation was given to our board. I put it in your packet. Um, it's the water uh, supply assessment. Um, and it, it'll give you a good idea generally of what's involved in that. Now, if you really want to see, let's say you got a development in your neighborhood, in your community, and you want to find out what went into the study, um, those go before our board. They're acted upon. And um, you can actually, there are links to those studies. You know, some of them are a 1,000 pages long. What I can do for you is I'll kind of track it for a while and see if there's anything that comes up in Van Nuys. And then I'll send you guys the link, and you can see what I'm talking about. But just for general information, I've got something in your packet on that. Thank you. Thank you. Rosemary Jenkins. Uh, well, I have a few things to say. I've been working closely with CWP and Lane from Los Angeles, so I'm sort of doing a comedy because that Lane is
Where's it? What's his name? Greg? Uh, Ooh, that guy, what's his name? And washing machines. Uh, they put in uh, carbon monoxide, smoke detectors, free toilets, faucets, everything. It's really wonderful. Well, someone's got to put it in. Nothing's free. As far free. as the uh, solar, to answer part of your question, free the net metering free. right now is more with the commercial property right now with someone's VWT, which is a, pro a public the labor utility. Labor is not free. You, if you have uh, solar on your home, if you produce more than you make, you don't get to make a profit. Edison, for instance, you can do that. That's a uh, privately owned utility. So the, the businesses can do that, the net meter. Mm. No, I, I believe you're mistaken. The residential does have net metering. I have net metering. Well, and I, I, if my mind goes over, one day I get it reverses the meter, and if it goes, then it goes the other but, way. But you only build up credits uh, towards your future electric bills. You're not actually selling the electricity. Right. right. Yeah, it goes That's as credits. Yeah. Say, the private, like Edison, you actually can get money back either on a monthly or yearly basis, but you don't get money. You get credits that roll over for a certain period of time. But what I recommend strongly is to lease solar because when you lease it it's a 20-year contract you uh, lock in your rate rates are going to go up you lock in your rate for 20 years there are five-year increments of renewal after that and you haven't had to put out a cent if you need a new roof before they uh, install it you can get a discount i recommend it's what they call a cool roof which reduces the, the energy uh, use inside your home and so it's really quite a, a, a wonderful uh, program in, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the solar. Yeah, and if you're going to participate, definitely do your homework and if you do hire a contract, on top of it, get involved in understanding the process, the information. It's very key to making sure that things go smoothly. But there's something that you haven't mentioned as community solar. Uh, community solar is something that is definitely in the works. Sure. And uh, not all homes, even if you look in the valley, you have a lot of tree area. Your home, your roof may not be conducive to solar. Uh, so what VWP right now is doing, they're putting solar on the public buildings, on LAUSD buildings. They're talking about like solar I have no idea. communities where yeah. you she's can buy stock I think she's out of order. into community solar, which will help reduce very good. And as your stakeholder said, that is that is in development. They were going to roll it out about a year ago. And they need further public input. So, and one one final comment. I just want you to be able to utilize DWP as a resource, particularly for your community events. We've got a bureau, speakers bureau, with 35 speakers. We've got all these various uh, 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 topic specific outreach workshops, et cetera, that we have throughout the year. I'm available to you. Um, so there's a, uh, we have an exhibit group as well. Please utilize that. Call on us when you're having community events. We can come out and work with you on those. Perfect. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Pardon. All right. Next up, we have Tom Meredith. Uh, he is going to be overseeing our elections next year. And then we will be jumping into new business. And we'll be out of here in five minutes. Out of respect for your time, how much time do I have? Is five minutes so okay? Yeah, I'll be All quick. Right. Okay. First off, thank Hey, quiet down. First off, thanks so much uh, for inviting us out. Um, I am a Valley boy myself. I grew up in your neighbor uh, here in Northridge. I used to drive my dad's 67 vet up and down Van Nuys Boulevard. People still do that? Nope. No, they stop. <laughs> no. <laughs> hmm? no cruise nights. No, no cruising nights. Um, first job was down at the Carnation Company, which was across from the Chevy plant. And now no, it's, it's a school. It's a school. Gone. Um, I'm here to give you some updates on elections. And I talked with George a little bit. So um, I'm not going to go into the weeds. I'm going to give you the sort of 30,000 foot level right now. Basically, the objective of, of elections this year is to really amp up participation and engagement. The um, city recognizes that in order to do that uh, they have to really engage themselves with a lot of resources and support so there's a couple of key things i want to share with you uh, how many have been in elections before on this board all right so half of you um 
you're probably happy to know that the elections have been taken out from underneath the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment and put to the city clerk where, where it should be. Uh, because of that, then there's a lot of resources, a lot of know-how, there's a lot of databases, there's a lot of technology. Um, the, um, the city has hired several people. I'm what's known as an independent um, election ad uh, administrator. Apparently this position in the past was um, a volunteer position. I'm a paid position, so I have a vesting in this. Um, there will be paid positions at the polls, poll managers, and there will be um, the opportunity for any neighborhood council who wants to pony up an additional $2,000 out of their budget, uh, an election manager to run it. Just do it all, soup to nuts or to whatever level you want them involved with it. Mm -hmm. um, I am also on neighborhood councils. Um, uh, I've been in the system for about five years, first with Hollywood Studio District and, and now with Hollywood United Neighborhood Council. Uh, I'm going to do this because uh, I'm in charge of the elections and I don't have the time to do it, especially with what they're asking us to do this year. Um, as I said, the city really is looking for a bigger, more robust turnout, much more candidate, um, candidate uh, ca uh, campaigning for candidates for each seat. So we do have goals. Uh, we have the goal of three candidates per open seat, and we have the goal of a thousand voters. I noticed that you had 119 last time. Yep. In talking to George, you've got 150,000 residents in this area. So I mean, you don't even have a fraction of one percent yeah. turnout. So it's not representative. I mean, that's the point. So again, the city has recognized that they have to help out on this. So there's several things they're doing, not only these paid positions that uh, help be a little bit more aggressive <coughs> in helping neighborhood councils make a robust election, but they're getting involved with their own resources. For instance, they will be doing a lot of promotion and advertising of the elections itself. Um, they've hired, or not hired, pro bono, got um, one of the um, renowned creative directors from Shiat Day Advertising to really make a, you know, a good campaign. Um, they're going to be making the uh, voter registration um, mail list available to all neighborhood councils, and it will be um, plugged into uh, Nation Builder, which is a technology that for your region, so we'll actually have mail, uh, mail addresses available to us. Um, I'm not going to get into the weeds between, you know, what you should or shouldn't be doing, uh, but George had asked me, tell, tell, tell us what you need right now. Yeah. Four things. One, I don't see a stipulation sheet, so I don't know who your election chair is, I don't know who your outreach no. chair is, I don't know where the election's held. I did tell you, held. we didn't do it. Where are the election's held? Um, the elections are held in this building. In this building, okay. Usually in the other room right there. All right. Yeah. The stipulation sheet, it's, a, it's on empowerla.org, uh, yep. oh, and we in this it's an uh, online yeah. submission. So just Why would we Last year I was the elections chair, sir, and um, we brought it up at a previous meeting. It kind of didn't get taken care of, and uh, Dunn went ahead and used the uh, stats that we had from previously so they just automatically did that yeah okay um, I I really strongly encourage you that you have an election or outreach or you know, like in my case it's a combined group kind of doing it meeting soon and one of the reasons is because candidate filing opens up on January uh, December the 24th oh. so we uh, start registering and, and engaging candidates at that time. Um, knowing how the um, you know, calendar works out, when you create your whole marketing plan and a budget for elections, you're gonna have to have board voting approval for it, right? So that's not till January the 21st, right? So we're six weeks away. So this- That's it, what we did last time. Yeah. We took out a full the, page ad. And the city's gonna do um, a, a negotiation with Valley, is that Valley News? Yes. Yes. Okay. With Valley News. Daily News. 
Yeah. I remember it as the green sheet. But yep. Yeah, it was the Valley News and Green <laughs> Sheet right. first. No, yeah. we'll talk. So um, what, what I, so I encourage you to have a meeting before your next board meeting because the third and fourth thing that we need from you, I, I'm sorry, the stip sheet was number one. We need to see your marketing plan and we need to see your budget. What is the budget right now? Does anybody know? $4,000. Four thousand dollars. Four. Four. What we're what the city is expecting is fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> That's ridiculous. No, That's it's not ridiculous um, because it's it's yeah. money drives voters. It's like the national election, and you, you, if you have a hundred nineteen turnout on hundred and fifty thousand, you will be laughed out of city hall. You don't represent anybody. Sorry. It, just, it what we is did before what it was is. we partnered with a couple of other neighborhood councils, and that's yeah. and then we we got the that's how we did the um, you know ads in the daily news and uh, didn't spend that kind of money because we didn't have that kind of money to spend. Right. Quite well, quite frankly, voter apathy is at an all time high here. Right. So we right. we couldn't Let me see, finish, please. I'm sorry. All right. See waste in it. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. I understand. And you I cannot hear. make this constituency drink. I, I hear this um, a lot, and I'm not disagreeing with you. I mean, obviously, the national elections turn out, you know, under 20 percent or 14 percent in the city last time. I probably it, knocked on 400 doors. Yeah. And out of that 400 doors, maybe three people showed up. Yeah. And I did the same. And and that is less. And that's what we're dealing with here. Uh, if we're, we spent fifteen thousand dollars, that'd be one third of our budget, better than a third no, it's, of our it's budget. Like forty percent. Um, well, quite frankly, they, it is a waste of money. money. You got, you do, you are aware that you got an additional five thousand, right? The yeah. Mayor approved that uh -huh. additional. So, and and this can be both out of outreach or election. I don't know how you line item the uh, item the budget, but um, I mean, this is a year where. Um, you, you're, there's going to be no raised eyebrows to submit that kind of budget because I, I'm just going to leave this because this is the weeds and I really need to do this at subcommittee level. Gotcha. But these are the ideas. The, the city has pre-negotiated very economical rates with printers, vendors, um, bus bench um, contracts, um, direct mail pieces. Um, it, it's it's there's a lot they've done a lot of that busy work and I'm sure Jeanette you remember the last thing it's a pain in that you know what mm -hmm. right but quite Good. frankly th this is the most economically depressed area in the entire San Fernando that's Valley. what we're trying to say and what if if we had fifteen thousand dollars to give to everyone that came to us for a handout that would be a blessing all right rather than spend it on an election yeah that will not draw more than 150 people, Correct. no matter what we do, no matter how hard we work, no matter <coughs> what doors we knock on, they will not come out. They don't see a value in it. They don't see, they don't recognize what the worth of a Van Nuys neighborhood council is or any neighborhood council. The people that live in our district are in, at, at, at best, uh, uh, an immigrant nation and and whether their voting privileges are uh, limited real or not yeah. is is a, a matter of, of, of question yeah uh, so so quite frankly I mean as much as I would love to see 4,000 people come through that door and cast a ballot yeah. um, quite frankly that is a pie in the sky Pollyannish attitude. It's not going to happen, no matter what we do. Well, I, I hear this across every single neighborhood council. I hear it in my own. All I can tell you is in 2014, I ran the election um, there and we were able to increase it a uh, thousand percent. So, it, it, and there's certain things to do. And I can't get into that right now because that's not I, I got appropriate for this level of meeting. So I, I think what we should start to do is to think like, well, what can we do to, to improve this as opposed to we can't do it. If you start out with we can't do it, uh, you're done. I, I, look, you're done. I'm up for re-election. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I, I am termed out as vice president. 
so I will just be a board member from here on in. And, and uh, quite frankly, that will suit me well. Um, but we have gone begging to fill every single seat on this board. And it has been a challenge to do that, yeah. a true challenge to do that. To think that there would be three people running for each seat. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Wait, wait, wait. I need your title, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I didn't get your title. We're all massive. Independent what? I am the independent uh, elections, elections administrator. Administrator. Thank you. IEA. I'm going to give you some stuff if you're the election person. The city council for this city council election only got 5,000 people to vote. I know. I know. We're he got five, elected. Five times Edgar. as much as this little district. I understand. Right. So, yeah. This is the same. I hear the story across, including my own district. So I, I'm, I hear you. I think we need to talk on the subcommittee level about what the ideas are. And well, I'm not on it this year because I would well, have who, to run, who's too. Who's the election and who's the outreach person? Because I have stuff to leave. Maria from. is outreach. Maria's outreach. Hi, Maria. Hi. And who's elections? Were you going to do it? We. We, uh, we don't have an elections person, apparently. I well, thought Mr. Lynn had said he would, but. All right, well, let's we hold the election right now. Who wants to be the elections chair? Well, it has to be somebody who's not running? Somebody, ha yeah, it has to be someone who is not a running. Actually, yes, you actually, you can. Oh, you can? Because I did it yes, two can. years ago. Uh, oh, well, we were told I could you, not. The only thing you can't do is be at the polling site on election day because that's electioneering. But you can work all the way up to it. Who wants to be the elections election, chair? You need to vote. Why don't you put Jeanette back on? Yeah, I can do it, but I want to vote, too. Did you run two years ago? You can vote. Did you run two years ago? No, you can vote. I mean, you just allow you to vote. Two years ago? Then that, yeah. you have a four-year term. Yeah. 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 Actually, it's 100 feet away. But I nominate him. All right, so uh, seeing that this is business we need to handle um, and uh, nobody else wants to, uh, I make a motion we elect uh, Jeffrey Lynn as our elections chair. Second. No, Maria wanted it. Do you, you want? Wants it? Yeah. You want to be the elections chair, or you work together? I mean, it's it's kind of one in in my neighborhood council. We're together. Follow no rules here. That's right. You literally follow no rules. I Maybe open an email. Did you have something to say? Or we're in the middle of a vote, or did local entities? Okay, so uh, you're recognized, Maria. Or they can come to 7-Eleven. I'll give them free Slurpees. You know, I, I would run for, for this. Elections chair? I think that I can do uh, Yes, Candido. I can drive some people. Uh, if you're going to get free Slurpees. Sir, if I may, I'd like to address you. First of all, thank you for being here. I'm sorry you have to go through this, but no. Mr. Benjamin is right. I mean, you can do what we've tried many things to get to the public out of the phone. This is the only city council that can take it. Someone can be elected with less than 6,000. All the other districts are between 11 and 15, 19. Here, 6,000 will get you elected to the city council. So it's not a great feat. The, the issue is, though, is to try to fill three spots in every one of these elected the spots is, is going to be impossible. But uh, I think, I really do it's think it's cold. I don't know. I wish we would. They did it. If each one of them brought in 20, 30, let's say 50 uh, uh, voters out, you take that, that would increase the number. Take it by 100, 
There you go. You got your numbers there. So if the people were going to run, just get out and can bring in those numbers. We're going to do something. That's how you get participation. And in order to do that, you're going to need support. I mean, four thousand dollars to 119. Think about it. It's spending fifteen thousand. I mean, there's a lot of money. It's ludicrous. It is ludicrous. Thank you. So for the uh, elections chair, can we have co-chairs? If there was two council members that wanted to serve, we could have co-chairs, right? Yeah, of course. All right. So uh, if it pleases the council, I would like to nominate uh, Jeffrey Lynn and Paul Anon to be co-chairs for this election. Well, I can do it. Uh, Maria is happy with the outreach chair. I've worked a lot of elections. Do you have, do you have a problem serving with uh, Mr. Anon? No. Uh, Mr. Anon, would you be uh, open for that? Co-chair of the elections committee? Sure. Um, so I make a motion that we uh, vote and adopt uh, to have Mr. Anon and Mr. Lynn be the co-chairs of the uh, election. Uh, George, just quickly. Second. Mr. Anon, you gave me a coupon that says free pizza. Would you be willing to do that on election day that we would accept? Yeah, I will definitely work with, uh, work with our business, any businesses that we can partner with and try to get whatever we can get to help drive people in to vote, I would certainly be, uh, that's certainly something I think would be great to try. Quick question, Paul, are you running? Uh, yes, I am, I am up, I believe. Okay, that might be a, that might be No, a, well, he can do it up until. Oh, you don't want this? Um, he I can, mean, it, it's, it's obvious that, that you own 7-Eleven. Well, I am not, uh -huh. I am not 7-Eleven. I am a small business franchisee. What 7-Eleven decides to do as 7-Eleven Corporation, they are more than capable of doing themselves. And so I don't see any conflict with that. Fair enough. Do we? Uh, the motion on the floor is for Mr. Lin and Mr. Anand to be election co-chairs. I second. Uh, Mr. Benjamin has seconded the motion. Um, I call for the vote, Madam Secretary. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Mr. How uh, Benjamin? Yes. Mr. Hendry? Yes. Myself? Yes. Mr. Anand? Aye. Jason Ackerman? Is he gone? Stepped out. Stepped out. Okay. Um, Mr. Camara? C. Q? That means yes. <laughs> he also stepped out. Oh, yeah. Ms. Havard? Yes. Yeah, they stepped out together. Mr. Lazarowitz? Yes. And I said that wrong again, I'm sorry. Mr. Luna? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Martin's not here. Um, Ms. Ms. Meyer? Yes. Thank you so very much. Mr. Noel? Not, not here either. Kathleen? Yes. Stacy Raines? Yes. Mr. Robbins? Yes. Ms. Skelton? Yes. Passes with uh, more than enough. Uh, you did not. You want me to count it? Uh, Mr. Friedman. Oh, I am so sorry. He bought him. Uh, um, Mr. Friedman, sorry. Yes. Very good. Um, Was that a yes? We look forward to working with you. Yeah, okay. so, Thank you. So, again, One, three, four, a stipulation six, sheet, seven, eight, nine, ten. a meeting oh, before yeah, the January. Before sure. involved, let us know. Let me know. Ten, let's, have, let's have that meeting before six, our um, executive meeting because we'll mm -hmm. all be doing it at the same time, then yeah, we can set uh, that up. What's the date of the executive idea. board meeting? I don't know. Um, well, again, the I've got a couple of things here that just Monday the fourth of January. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember, candidate registration is uh, allowable as of December twenty fourth. That's the And who do you register with? Um, EmpowerLA.org. Okay. Yes. Uh, Candidate uh, registration ends for this region on the um, February 27th, something like that. About two months. So it begins, it begins well, December what? what? Well, okay. In, In April. April. I'm going like by my uh, first, memory here. Uh, Let me make first, sure. First week in April? Tuesday in April, I believe. <coughs> Candidate filing closes um, February 7th, sorry, not 27th. February 7th. Okay. And when is election day? April 7th. April 7th. My April 7th. Yours is birthday. Ooh. It can work. You can, you can have All right. Very good, Tom. Thank you very much. Um, wait, I still didn't finish. Wait. 
the last question I had is, is your board roster on Empower LA current? Probably not. No, no, and I will that, update that. that. I know, yeah, I will update that when I get home. By the end of the week. Yeah, I have uh, two people by to add and decade. a couple people to remove. We're here to help, you know, do this. Okay. We know. We understand. Okay. Here's some flyers already. Okay. Cool. Uh, Thanks think about culture. getting them distributed. Good with the culture. Yes. All right, let's rock and roll through this meeting, people. We've had a lot of fun. We had um, cake. We had Zev. Be before, before we go on, <clears throat> uh, I, I would like to see that this council uh, start sharing the load. Uh, and I'm talking about total participation. Uh, there, there's a handful of people that are doing the heavy lifting. And um, I got like zero cooperation tonight. I mean, zero cooperation tonight. All I'm asking is, if you're going to be a part of this council, participate, for crying out loud. Don't be a bystander. Take charge and work. That's what this is about. It's about working. Candido. Again, I'd like to support Mr. Beckman on I guess this. I know. It's, it's sad to sit here and watch those who work so hard and even though, Mr. Benjamin, you and I, we find it, but I see what you, I know you love Van Nuys and what you're going to do. And I sit and hear and watch some of the other people who do nothing. You know, even if it's out uh, doing, you know, collecting, or whatever it is that you're doing for the Van Nuys, but like, come here and show us what you're doing. Some people just show up, they come to the meeting, and they're not doing anything. So uh, I join you in that. I hope that uh, we can get better participation. Oh, God, I hope so. Some people have been too long, they should retire and go. Wow. All right, people, let's rock and roll through this, and uh, we can be out of here by midnight. It's only 9.20. Um, secretary's report, uh, Jeanette Hopp. Where we, uh, we're oh, I'm going still going to, to hear about this. Okay, what I did was passed out minutes. Uh, I did not get them online yet. I haven't sent them to Q, so you, just so you know, so they're not online, but they will be. And I'm sure I'm going to hear about that. But you have minutes in front of you so you could read them. Hopefully you had time to read them because you had them before the meeting started. Um, so Motion uh, to approve the minutes. Do I have a motion? Second. Uh, with that, I call for the vote, Madam Secretary. Wait, one sec. Let me do what he did and get out one. Okay. Okay. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Mr. Benjamin. Yes. Mr. Hendry. Yes. Myself, of course. Mr. Anand. Uh, abstain. Okay, Mr. Alexander. Jason's gone. Um, go Jack next. Ackerman, he's here. I mean, oh, he's back now? Yeah. yeah. Jason. Uh, yes. uh, abstain. But that's tonight. Sorry, I don't know why I have Ack Ackerman on right. Okay, Mr. Camara. Thank you. I approve the minutes. Q? Yes. So it's already done. Ms. Havard? Yes. Mr. Lazarowitz? Yes. Mr. Luna? I abstain. Of course. Mr. Lynn? Yes. I wasn't Mr. Here Martin's gone. Uh, Mr. Uh, Marabi? We're motoring through He's gone. Yeah. He's gone. Thank you. Ms. Meyer? Yes. Um, <laughs> Kathleen? Yes. Mr. Robbins? Yes. Other board members. Ms. Raines? Why would you not? Well, no, by me abstaining, I'm saying I don't know the minutes to be true. She's not here? There. That's why. Um, Ms. Skelton? Oh, no. Just a question. Is that page still a yes vote? No. 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 It's a no vote? No. 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 It's a neither. It's a neither. Oh, I'm okay. saying. It's a you don't want to say. And, um, Mr. Friedman. Yes. Thank you. It's going to pass. Passes. I can't say yes. All right. Uh, very good. Treasurer's report. Stacy, do you have anything for us? She's not here. All right. We can come back to that. Let's uh, go through the list here. 8A, the VNNC to address the current Public Records Act request pending before the VNNC. Uh, the VNNC to officially designate a liaison with the city attorney's office to work on public record act requests. I'm happy to handle this last one. Carino and I have been working with the city attorney, um, Amanda Silva, 
to do this. Yes. Um, this will be uh, close to the 70th one that I have handled for this council. Uh, it's been a great honor and privilege to do it. Um, I thoroughly enjoy all of it, but uh, it is time uh, for somebody else to handle this. Um, we get the these from time to time. Uh, we actually have the most Public Record Act requests of all 96 neighborhood councils. The city attorney's office says we're leading the league, so you can all be very proud of that. Um, do we have anybody that would like to um, handle the Public Record Act requests? I did them for a while, and I'd really rather not. Thank you. All right. Mr. Luna. I had a suggestion. It would seem that the Government Relations Committee is geared towards relating to other government agencies, including the city attorney. They might be a possible committee to uh, handle these. I would be happy with that, but it, you have to respond to them within 10 days, and sometimes the committee doesn't meet um, on that regular of a basis. We're happy to do that. Um, also, I, I don't know who else is interested, but they probably should have a computer. Um. Uh, I would be... Uh, if you guys would want to take the uh, responsibility of it, I'm happy to... Uh, yeah, it'd be very simple. The secretary passes it to the committee. The committee obviously keeps the executive board involved, abreast of what's going on. It's very simple. It's Fantastic. Just, yeah, very simple. So uh, the liaison that we would like to designate um, will be the committee members of the Government Reform and Oversight Committee, the Government Affairs Committee, with the secretary uh, handling the correspondence uh, at the end of the day. Um, do, yes, Mr. Hendry. I just wondered on my VNNC uh, mailbox, I got this interesting discussion about a court appearance on Monday. Does anybody see that? Does anybody have any comment on that? I haven't seen anything. of. No. I, we haven't been who's, served with anything. Uh, but I don't know. It's on the VNNC. It's on my personal you know, address to me, John Hendry, VNNC. It came about 5 o'clock. I wonder if anybody had seen it. No. no. That's just you. <laughs> I don't know. It just says, you know, and it does, it, I can show it to you after the meeting. I just wondered. I thought somebody else would have seen it by now. I'm not making it up, but it may be a fake. Don't know, because... I didn't see is my it, email. What's in regards to? It, uh, wait a second, let me read this here. Notice of appearance in court 00451653 from State Court Dwight Berg. Notice of appearance in court. You have to appear in the court on December 13th. Please do not forget to bring all documents related to the case. Note the case will be heard by the judge in your absence if you do not come. The court notice is attached to this email. Case. What case? It doesn't even say what case? It doesn't really say. I know. But I've got, it's on. It could be a fake. It just I mean, so how very can much you bring got me upset. Documents if you don't even know what it's I'm about. I know. It's all, it, you, you, would have to, you would have to be served by, a, by a physical process subpoena. server. It's, it's phony. Yeah, and you have 30 days yeah. to respond. Exactly. Okay. I'm not an expert on this. I'm just Mr. Lynn, the lawyer, can look at it. All right. From uh, let's let's address 8A. From here on out, uh, it's the recommendation of this council that uh, the Government Affairs Committee handles the PRAs, uh, with Jeanette finally uh, being the one that sends them in. Um, Carino and I will handle this latest one, which is due by Friday, and then happily uh, pass the torch to a new generation of PRA answerers. So. Should we vote on this? Um, you have to. All right, yeah. so I make a motion that the new liaison with the city attorney's office is the for government all future PRA. for all future PRAs is the Government Reform and Oversight Committee and Jeanette Hopp. Seconded. With that, I call for the vote, Madam Secretary. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Mr. Benjamin. Yes. Mr. Hendry. Aye. I guess I have to say aye, though I don't want to. Mr. Anand. Aye. Uh, Mr. A uh, Ackerman. Aye. Mr. Kamara. Yes. Q. Is yes. he there? Q. Yes. Can't hear it. Ms. Havard. Yes. Mr. Lazarowitz. Yes. Okay. Mr. Luna. Yes. Mr. Lynn. Yes. 
Ms. Meyer. Yeah. He's, he's a committee chair. Ms. Padden. She could do whatever. Okay. Yes. Ms. Raines. Aye. Mr. Robbins. Yes. Ms. Skelton. Gone. Gone. Um, Mr. Friedman. Yes. Passes. Very good. Next up, the VNNC to purchase the signs designating the Irwin Street Mall, the officials of Zarasovsky Irwin Street Mall, the VNNC to have them ready for the general meeting in December. Uh, Let's table this. All right, tabled. I'm uh, all for tabling it. Does anybody have any objections to that? Which one are we on? Fabulous. 8C, the VNNC to host and support a holiday food drive at the December council meeting. The VNNC to request the general public bring an unwrapped toy and have it donated to Delano Park and the Van Nuys Park City Recreation Center. Uh, Candido, thank you and John Camara for doing that. Our, uh, Jeff Lynn brought in a big bag of thank you, Jeff. I brought in a, yes, I, I got a chess, a, a game of chess. Hey, I, ca I, I count as a person because every kid wants to open up a chess game for, for Christmas. Yay, chess. All right, yes, thank you guys for doing that. That uh, is a very good thing. All right, let's get into planning and land use. 8D, 15232 Sherman Way, plan approval application to renew an existing uh, conditional use permit with a request to extend the life of the grant. Are you guys here? Fabulous. Sorry it took so long, but actually this is quite early for us. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you're looking for a letter of support. Yes, sir. All right, granted. Have a good day. Thank you. All right. <laughs> no, uh, tell us about your uh, project. Okay, uh, I'll be quick. So this is the CVS at Sherman Way and Sepulveda, the CUP.